different uh, grand openings that were scheduled and then uh, changed because of various and sundry weather events. We finally made it. Even though it's raining, I'm glad to see you all here. Thank you for coming. At this time, I'd like to recognize all of our council members that are here, starting at my left, uh, Mr. Eugene Baden. I'm going to skip over Charles for a minute. Mr. Jimmy Bird, Artie Baker, and I think that's all that I've seen here this morning. The rest of them are not coming. But I skipped over Charles Edens uh, because I understand that it was his idea for this to be somewhat of an environmental center uh, to be used by the community and our students. Way back, I believe, in 2010, he came up with the concept, and it's always been on the, on, on the books since then. So I want to recognize Charles for his foresight and forethought uh, for thinking of this, and it's finally come to fruition, and this is what we have. So at this time, I'd like to uh, welcome our county administrator, Mr. Gary Mixon. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank County Council, one, for the vision for this particular project, and not only this project, but for all the projects that we've got ongoing in Suffolk County. Uh, as you all know, and I look around the room, I see a lot of people that uh, are very familiar with what's going on in Suffolk and participate at so many different levels. You know it and have been a part of it, but I want to thank Council uh, for, for their support and their vision. Uh, Mr. McCain mentioned that Charles had a big part of this way back and actually probably 2010 when it actually got funded. We started talking about the project even before then. Uh, it was recovery zone monies, if I'm not mistaken, through a bond uh, that we actually got the first initial funding. It was only about $300,000, if I recall. And uh, of course, this is a lot more than $300,000. Uh, total price, I think, is going to be right around me, and I think when we get all said and done. But we knew that we wanted something bigger and better, so we waited and, and, and raised funds from different uh, organizations. The uh, state of South Carolina came in last year and gave us the last little bit and kind of put us over the top. Uh, if you get a chance to thank our delegation members, uh, particularly Merle Smith, who actually uh, cheerleaded this project over in Columbia for us, gave us the actual funds to kind of complete the project and get it what it is today. Um, I notice we don't have any representatives today from the city of Sumter, but the city of Sumter actually supports the park operation, the overall park operation with funding every year because they recognize what an asset this is to not only our community, but attract tourism. And that obviously feeds the, uh, the accommodations tax and hospitality tax that they, they operate. So uh, a big player in this as well. Lorraine, um, of course, has a big part now in making sure all this kind of comes together. We'll be sending out some information as far as rentals. This property is going to be available for rental for the community. Special recognition, of course. Chris Hawkins uh, was not able to be with us today, but Hawkins and Cole actually constructed this beautiful facility. Um, put a lot of personal touches in the building, which we greatly appreciate. But the real mind behind it all, the design, is Mr. Mary Draper, Drake, standing over here by the door. To get a chance to uh, speak to him. Uh, not only did he design this beautiful building, but he also designed all the other amenities in this park. Uh, we think it's right impressive. Pro the building itself uh, is about 6,000 square foot of usable space. Uh, that includes roughly, I think Drax says somewhere around 1,600 square foot is condition. Then we have the nice space outside and we've kind of got set up with some of these bar type tables out there so you can kind of see what it looks like. Then you've got a large balcony uh, out on the sides. It's very usable. And of course, you won't beat the views from there. And then the space underneath was designed in a fashion that it could be used as well. It's got a higher ceilings, it's got a concrete floor, but we've got picnic tables down there now. Uh, right outside, you'll see uh, there's a little staged area with concrete steps down. Our goal there was to create an aquatic educational opportunity. Is that a good way to say it, Trey? Yeah, outdoor classroom. Outdoor classroom, it sounds better. Uh, so we're working through that. The park has some natural features that we want to still maintain the environmental component of the building. They've got some facilities downstairs that would be nice for the classes, the biology classes that might want to come out, do some activities and clean up downstairs. So it was designed for that. We've got a beautiful trail system here that they can actually use. We've got some unique um, environmental components. We've got a, a, a Carolina Bay that's located on the, I guess that would be the northwestern portion of this property. 
that's got a boardwalk, a raised boardwalk, so kids can actually walk in a Carolina Bay without disturbing the environmental components of it. So as we develop this property, it's about 200 acres total out here. As we develop this property, uh, in the future there will be educational opportunities for the environmental components and we'll build it all in and let this be the hub for the facility.